Good morning. This is Kenneth Vance from Rooftop Videos at EndTheGlobalReset.com. Forgive me, I have a little bit of a cold, and this is the weather I prefer. This is nice, rainy fall weather. Reach off of that. I'm going to go over in the third part of my Final Kingdom series a subject you might not think at first goes in line with the midwife company but it does this is a huge step in overcoming the spirit of Jezebel and Satan's lying doctrines and disposing of his pagan traditions this one is directly over the immortal soul is there an eternal hell fire and I'm sure some of you that have been burdened to death with all these verses and there's all all too many different opinions over this issue because the word seems to contradict itself but not when properly assembled when we do it the proper way and most of all we listen to the king who ought to know what he's talking about so we're going to get right into it and there's a lot of verses I have papers here we're going to let the word interpret itself today because we cannot offer up a blemished lamb and it's not the focal point of this teaching here but this business that the king was crucified and he went down into hell and he didn't really die well, that's that's the foundation of it. Well, I'm not going to cover it much because I'm going to let the Word cover it. So I'm fair enough? We're going to immediately start because there's a lot to go over. And I'm going to go over this as quickly as possible. But I got probably 16 pages. Everything's written big. But we're going to go through the Word and and because we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yah. So that's where we got to stand. And it begins with that. The big issue and the foundation of everything that we start is do we have an immortal soul? That's where we're going to begin this whole deal. Before we can understand if there is an eternal hellfire, <laughs> we have to determine do we have an immortal soul? It's one of the church's primary doctrines. But where did the idea of having an immortal soul come from? <laughs> we're about to find out. And we're going to begin in the Word. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, I'm going to read this to you. This is our whole foundation. And if we understand the rest of the entire Bible from this, then we're going to get it correct. And the eternal Yah formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils, what? The breath of life. The human life, of course. And man became a living soul. You show me anywhere where we have a soul. That's not what the word says. It doesn't say it at all. He says we became a living soul. We don't have a soul. So where does this leave when we die and people will say our soul goes to heaven or hell? <laughs> it doesn't say that. So what is the soul? This is what we have to get correct in our thinking and our doctrinal positions we have to understand what a soul is or the rest of the word isn't going to make sense this is why people are not seeing eye to eye on everything is because the foundation has been thrown away these churches are lying to you satan's lying to you the so-called philosophers the apostle paul warned about is lying to you Man became a living soul. So what is a soul? Well, let's see what can actually happen to the soul. Because I put it right here, Ezekiel 18.4. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. 
Let the word of Yah interpret the word of Yah. What does Ezekiel say? The soul that sins, it shall die. I thought the soul could not die. I thought it was immortal. Didn't you? Weren't you told that? Aren't the churches preaching that? Aren't people believing that? Isn't Satan trying to convince you of that? Jezebel is making you one with it? Because if you're one with this idea, that part of your salvation walk, that part of you is offering up a blemished lamb, a sick, corrupt lamb. You're offering up a counterfeit Messiah, at least in that aspect of your belief system. And that's a fact. And Malachi is very clear. You cannot offer up a corrupt lamb. Especially when the lamb describes the definition of everything. But yeah, everything's been misconstrued. And a lot of this is Catholic garbage from long ago. Passed on through the centuries to our day that, we, that people are still believing. And we're misconstruing the entire word from that point on. Because you see it, it turns into this somehow, some way, the indoctrination of the counterfeit believers, which they call themselves Christianity. There's no such thing as Christianity in the Father's sight. You to come out of Babylon, which means you come out of Christianity, period. There is no such thing as a church. Not in his eyes. He didn't come here to start a church. He came here for his people. You find me anywhere in the Old Testament where he says there's going to be a church because it's not there that's catholic garbage i'm not rooting too heavy against the catholics i'm just trying to point out the facts okay i'm getting off base here the soul here <coughs> excuse me is the hebrew word nefesh n-e-p-h-e-s-h -E 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 used throughout the entire old testament it defines a breathing creature, animal, or vitality, body, breathe, or to breathe, creature, man, mind, mortality. Mortality? <laughs> I thought the soul was immortal. But that's not what I'm seeing in my Strong's Concordance. Thus James Strong and all those working with him got it wrong as well. But the rest of the word confirms that the soul is mortal. Here's your soul. See, here comes the problem. For those of you who are advanced enough to know this, is Paul says, we are now the temple of Yah. Well, there's three courts in the temple. There's the outer court, the body, there's the inner court. This is your brain, your thinking process, where your free will comes from. There's the two elements that comprise what the soul is. Okay, I'm not going to get into all of it because there's just hundreds of verses. I could be here for a week. And you're not going to sit here and listen that long. We are the soul. But then there's the Holy of Holies where Yah resides. We have to rip the six-inch veil of our heart to reach him. That's him. That's not us. And you, we'll get into that later. Now, I know you may uh, be reaching for the Bible. Oh, I'm going to prove this guy wrong. I from the get-go. I got you. Yeah, right. Knock yourself out. Go right ahead. We are a soul. The soul can die. We don't have a soul. This, this, I wrote this down. This is Moses in Deuteronomy 12, 23. For the blood is the life. Oh, now we're going to learn what life and death really is. Instead of what the churchianity groups have been telling you. And thou mayest not eat the life with the flesh. Well, why do I bring that up? Because of Emmanuel, who took place of the animal sacrifices. He was born in a manger among animals because he was ending and taking the place of the animals. But these animals, when they were sacrificed under the old covenant, 
they had to die. You better believe it. They were dead. Or else they couldn't have been the sacrifice. So where does that lead the king who took place of the animal sacrifices? He had to fulfill the law in every way. And that includes the sacrifice. Well, that means he had to die. Ezekiel's very clear. That was the fall of man, the fall of beast. As one dies, so dies the other. And the king took the place of the animal sacrifices. So quite naturally, he, <laughs> he had to die. Listen to what it says here in Isaiah 53, verse 10. Yet it pleased the eternal to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul, his soul, Emmanuel's soul, his body, just like us, an offering for sin. Well, his offering had to match the animal sacrifice offerings in the same way. Or he couldn't have been that final sacrifice for man. This is Isaiah speaking here. Not me. I'm just telling you what the word says. That's what it says. I got so many verses. And this is just a smattering of all that is in there. But Isaiah in 53, two verses later. Now let's see what Isaiah says. Because he hath poured out his soul, which is the word nefesh again, unto death. He's prophesying of the, the crucified Messiah. He was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Well, if that's the case... He says his soul was poured out unto death, not to go into hell, as written in the New Testament. There's something really wrong with that one. We'll get more into it, but you got to see it through the eyes of the rest of the Word to make sense of whether this was a Catholic addition to the Word, because, quote, Jesus going into hell, but yet he didn't really die, and he bringing people out. That's not matching up with the rest of the word because the rest of the word does not confirm this. I don't see it anywhere. Unless you can prove me wrong. You can. Please show me, but I don't think you, you're not going to have a good time doing that. So let's see what the Jewish encyclopedia says. The belief that the soul continues its, its existence after the dissolution of the body is speculation and is nowhere expressly taught in the Holy Scripture. The belief in the immortality of the soul came to the Jews from contact with Greek thought. It's like where we get Hades and all these other gods, Romulus, God of War and all this. Greek thought and chiefly through the philosophy of Plato, its principal exponent who was led to led to it through Orphic, if I pronounce that correct, and Eleusian mysteries in which Babylonian and Egyptian views were strangely blended. This is as quoted from Garner Chet Armstrong, I believe. It came from the pagan Greeks and was introduced into an apostate paganized Christianity nearly two centuries after Christ. Now, I don't use the word Christ, but that he, he does. The Greeks obtained it from the Egyptians, who taught it soon after the apostasy at the Tower of Babel. End quote. You heard that right. It's just like the pagan holidays, which I go over and over again, has been Christianized, has been taught as the right thing, the same thought patterns from long ago they were introduced in uh, Peter and Paul was warning that this was going to happen they introduced all this garbage into the doctrinal belief system and then they blended it made it okay and put the name of Emmanuel on it well actually the name of Jesus and Christ in this case on it and led people to a counterfeit Messiah which led to a religion we call Christianity well, what took place in the beginning that we should be concerned about? 
Well, it all began with Adam and Eve. He says, the tree in the midst of the garden, the center of attention, don't eat of it, for in the day yet thou eatest thereof, thou wilt surely die. Oh, no, not no, I didn't really mean that, Adam and Eve. You just go to heaven or hell. <laughs> well, apparently the very same day that they ate of that forbidden fruit, they didn't die. They died hundreds of years later, at least for Adam in the genealogy. I believe that's Genesis chapter 5. Correct me if I'm wrong. But he says, you will surely die. Not be in heaven or hell. But guess what? Enter the serpent now. For he says, no, 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 no. You were told all wrong just like churchianity is telling you the same lie from the tree of good and evil in the garden of Eden. He says, thou will not surely die. For in the day that thou eatest her of thine eyes shall be opened. The same lying garbage. But the whole word says we will die. I mean, it's just as plain as day, but you're still believing the serpent that says you will not die. Your soul's immortal. You'll not die. You're either going to, in the day of judgment, you're going, according to church, Satan and Jezebel and all that, you're either going to find eternal life or you're going to find eternal life. That's what you're being taught. Eternal life in heaven or hell. That's not what the word says, because right in Genesis, you will surely die. So we're going to find out what death is. I mean, it's just like there's backwards and forwards, ups, down, right, left, black, white. Death and life are two opposite things, not the same thing. So now let's go, because all of your New Testament doctrine, they're out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, so any word be established. So all this eternal hellfire garbage has to be confirmed with the mouth of the Old Testament. Your New Testament doctrine must have sound, a sound foundation in the Old Testament. Or it's false, it's error. Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. See, this verse confuses people into the immortal soul doctrine, but he says the soul can be killed, but yet, I, didn't I just say that the our body, it, along with our brain, our thinking process, is the soul? Yeah, it is. He's illustrating soul and body can be destroyed. He's illustrating that your soul really is the body. Okay? that's People gets it backwards sometimes when the king speaks or someone else in the word. Luke 13, 3. I'm just going through these verses because there's so many. I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. I'm gonna. I can hear it now. Well, you just pulling all these verses out of context. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am, but not out of context. Bringing them into context. Hoot and holler all you want. You shall likewise perish. Look up the meaning of the word perish. It doesn't show anything about an eternity in heaven or hell. Perish means exactly what it sounds like. Gone. Non-existent. 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 14. And here we go. This, this right here is over the Jesus went down into hell. He didn't really die. But he went down into hell and brought all these people out of hell. Which is a contradiction of the word. I don't see anywhere out of the mouth of, of a second witness in the Old Testament. Anywhere that he goes into hell and brings a whole bunch of people out. I mean, I may be wrong, but this thing smacks of Catholic garbage. Translator garbage. It does not 
smell of truth to me. And it's important in these last days because Hades, the pale horse, my, I'm truly thinking that somewhere around <coughs> this Halloween that the four seal will be loosed. That all four horses are here. Here's Paul. Now if Messiah be preached that he rose from the dead, well, on well, no, he just rose from hell. Well, however you want to take it. How say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Messiah is not risen. And if Messiah be not risen, then our preaching is in vain. Well, how are we supposed to take that? How are we supposed to take this, people? He had to be dead. He, Messiah be preached that he rose from the dead. What is dead? What is death? In hell for three or so days like we're being told? Preaching to the people in hell that they're not even dead either? That's not what he says. He From the dead. They're dead. He didn't go to hell preaching to people that's dead too. You have to be dead. And we're going to find out exactly what death is. If he, if he was not dead, then his preaching is in vain. And so is everyone else's, for that matter. He was dead. As the animals died in the sacrifices, he died too. He had to be dead. Or your belief in him, in that matter, you're offering up a corrupt lamb that didn't really die. He did, wasn't really sacrificed. He had to die. I'm letting the word confirm this. Philippians 3, 10 and 11. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Once again, his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 3. Messiah died for our sins. Died. What is death then? Is there anywhere in the word that we can confirm what death truly is? Because we're going to have to know. You're not being taught that correctly in the churches. There's some that has it right. We're going to find out what death is and put an end to Satan's garbage. Excuse me, I got off so many notes. It's I just can't remember it all. Letting these verses speak to you of what the truth actually does say. Letting Yah confirm his own word. Acts 2.29 Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. That what? Oh, okay. That he is in heaven and eating of the marriage supper of the Lamb, and he's having a great time, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. <laughs> well, that's how I'm supposed to take it, right? But that's not what is said here. Let me reword this exactly as it is written. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. Peter's making a big point. And guess, guess when this happened, by the way. Peter spoke this on the Pentecost. After when? Well, the king had already been resurrected. He's already gone. Well, uh, well, I guess that means that uh, there's no resurrection to heaven at death even after his resurrection or his ascension, excuse me, into heaven. Let me freely speak unto you, the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried. And his sepulcher is with us unto this day. And in verse 34, 
for David is not ascended into the heavens. Not. He's dead. That's what death is. You're gone. You're dead. You don't exist. You're just, you're not there. This is Peter speaking, not me. You would argue. You go argue with what? You can just argue with him when, in the judgment day. I don't know. But right here it says he's both dead and buried. You're hearing the word correctly, on target. Yah's word speaking. Not me. I didn't write it. Ezekiel three nineteen. We're just gonna go to these verses. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beast. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. This is the word of Yah right here. As one dieth, so dieth the other. It goes on to say, I didn't write all this verse down, it's quite long. For all is vanity for you to think otherwise. That's why Solomon said that in Ecclesiastes. This is Old Testament. This is out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. As one dies, so dieth the other. That's what death is. And David is still in the grave. So if David, the, what we call the man close to Yah's heart, well... If he's dead, then I guess Ezekiel and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Daniel and all these guys are dead too, along with everybody else, whether you're wicked or righteous. Psalms 146, 3 through 4. Put not your trust in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth. He returneth to his earth. This is what death is. But what does he say here? In that very day his thoughts perish. Elsewhere in Psalms it says the dead doesn't praise Yah at all. Because it can't. Because you're not there. You're dead. Not alive in heaven or hell. In limbo, purgatory, whatever. It's right here. In that very day, his thoughts perish. What does the word perish mean? Non-existent. It just isn't. Yet we're being told and programmed by Satan and his churches just the opposite. You might think, well, why is this important? Shouldn't I be teaching an eternal hellfire so that I can scare the hell out of people and get them to be saved? No. Uh, no, you got it all backwards. Well, people aren't scared, they're not going to be saved. The thought of not existing for all of eternity, I think that's pretty darn scary. Yeah, it's not. A, yeah, some people might get a, a sigh of relief. Oh, at least I won't suffer for all eternity. But on Judgment Day, you might be thinking quite different. Just think about that one. Long and hard. Where it says the wages of sin is death. Not life. Death. Death can only mean one thing. Non-existence. Matthew 25, 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. According to church doctrine, it should say, and these shall go away into eternal, non-ending punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. No. It says punishment, not punishing. I mean, how could Yah and the rest of us see this eternal suffering? I mean, does even Hitler deserve eternity in excruciating pain and torment that we can't even fathom? I, I don't get it. But Malachi says, 
the, the wicked shall be ashes under the soles of our feet. Well, if you're still burning for all eternity, you're not quite burning up and you're definitely not becoming ashes. How are we to take this? What's death? Is death and life opposites of each other? Well, the words confirm and they are. The king's even confirming it. Paul, Peter. First Timothy 6.16, I believe it's the word immortality is only listed five times if I'm correct on this in the Bible. I'm not, I'm not for sure. I'm pretty close. I bring out just one. 1 Timothy 6.16 Who only hath immortality. Who only has immortality? Well, Yah. Oh, <laughs> Let's repeat this again. Yah. Who only hath immortality. I thought, <clears throat> as we're being told and programmed, that we all have immortality, an immortal soul. I... That's not what I'm seeing here. Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. That power belongs only to Yah. There's our holy of holies. That we have to get through our six inch carnal veil, if you will, to reach that holy of holies, to find eternal life. I am the truth, the way, and the life. And we're not going to find it any other way because the king says only through me you're going to find it. But he's our breach. He's our blood covering, our grace covering to reach that holy of holies. We're the temple. So now comes the most famous verse. this is the most famous verse it's definitely one of the most misunderstood verses John 3 16 for Yah so loved the world that he gave his only I don't even need to read this that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but hath everlasting life now <laughs> there's your answer the most popular verse, I believe, in all of Scripture. Should not perish, but come to everlasting life. These are two different things, opposites of each other. Yet you're not being told that. You're being lied, programmed by religion and churchianity. Which goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. You're not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, what is this tree? Well, what's the only institution on the earth that primarily goes over, wrong as they are in most cases, over what good and evil is? Well, that's religion. Do not eat of religion. For in the day that thou doest, thou will surely die. No, you'll be as God, knowing good and evil. <clears throat> as written in the word knowing good and evil you'll be as him now oh now through religion we're to come out of Babylon we're to come out of Jezebel we're to come out of religion completely there's no church there's no Christianity this is all garbage now we're going to go over because I we there's no immortal soul. Period. Point blank. 